Hello, everybody. Hooded Cobra Commander 788 here, and we are in Cobra Convergence 7, and I have one of our favorite Cobra Convergence presenters. Uh, Mike, would you introduce yourself and tell everybody uh, who you are, what you do, and for whom you do it? Hi, I'm Mike Irizarry. I am the host and producer of What's on Joe Mind, uh, the Internet's number one long la longest-lasting G.I. Joe podcast. Uh, we've been doing this for uh, 12 years now in some way, shape, or form. Uh, we started out audio only, and now we do uh, our, our news news discussion program in a live stream format Tuesday nights right here on the YouTubes. Um, and uh, you can just, it, it really, it's a, a huge and daunting library. You can find us, all, all that old stuff on Podbean. Uh, we still do au uh, update audio stuff on Podbean, or it's just the soundtrack for the tuesday night stuff now but uh yeah but yeah it's it's uh, at what's on joe mind here on youtube uh, be sure to check us out uh yes and um you're live now uh you did start uh as an audio only podcast that's when i found you um and uh you you have some co-hosts can you tell us about your co-hosts yes our our uh longest lasting co host at this point is the the beautiful and talented co-hostess with Comosis, Joe Colton. Uh, she is on maternity leave at the moment. On the on the congratulations again to her on the birth of baby ba uh, Mango Habanero, and um, but uh, she will be back with us before too much longer. I, I hope uh, we haven't actually talked about it yet. I've I've kind of left her alone for a couple of weeks. She, you, she's busy. She's a little right. Busy. You, you kick a kid out, and and you maybe three weeks buffer time is plenty. Like it's it's yeah. just. It, congratulations or mm -hmm. hope you're feeling well you know you just when are you coming back to the show <laughs> that's not so much a thing uh we also have the former head of the uh, of marketing for the gi joe brand at hasbro so the guy who used to run the brand in, in the late teens mark weber uh on hand and he is um as sun bleached as always <laughs> and um um and, and of course the in the fourth chair uh, is is my brother the the comics expert of the team the one and only rack time rob uh and i i love watching you guys and i i love all the, i wanted to make sure we plugged the damn co-hosts i didn't want to leave anybody out so we absolutely because they got the, one of them is sitting on the other side of the room and he would cut me that's well yeah we and we don't want that and and uh, I'm glad that Rob, I like Rob on the show, and I'm glad that you pointed out comic book expert. He, there's no nepotism involved. He he has a role to play. Right, right. Like I I could say that um, that you know oh he but honest to God if if it happened in DC or Marvel between now and the 1930s he probably knows something about it. Like he's one of those guys. I, I I'm I'm kind of a comic book guy, right? And he's forgotten more about comic books than I've ever known. So that's just the fact that he's family just meant that he's very, very affordable. <laughs> yes. Uh, <and> so, <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Rob, for being uh, uh, for 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 being a, a, a host on the show and also for not charging very much. Uh, your right. rates are, are perfect. Um, but uh, what's on Joe Mind, as you said, has been around for a long time. I discovered you guys uh, before you moved to doing the live uh, stuff on YouTube. Um, the origins of what's on Joe Mind go so far back, they predate your involvement in it. So how right. did you get hooked in, up with what's on Joe Mind and, you know, eventually become uh, the host and producer? Well, uh, Gary Godso has been a, a good friend of mine for a number of years. And Gary is one of the three guys who, who started what's on Joe mind. And I, it, basically it was, it was a, uh, it was a post on a message board. So you know, complaining that there were no geo GI Joe podcasts and uh, you know, we, we needed to, Oh, the, you know, we needed to get together and do one. And these are the three guys that, that submitted for it. I actually would have been in on it then, but I had a job that prevented me from working or, or prevented me from, from doing that sort of thing at night. You know, same, same story. What goes around comes around. We'll just leave it at that. But, um, and so my involvement at the beginning was kind of there and that I was in Gary's ear the entire time uh, as an old failed radio guy. 
um, you know, my friends doing radio programs was, uh, was almost as good as, 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 uh, me not doing radio programs. So, <laughs> so, um, so I would talk to him about it a lot and, and, uh, and, uh, you know, if, if you have any problems with the early production of what's on Joe mind, those early episodes, I'm sorry. Uh, but, uh, that when the opportunity came, I said, Hey, I, I can't do every week, but you give me enough advance notice. I, I can, I can sub in. And so the first opportunity to do that was on the third episode of the show. Uh, so, uh, I subbed for, for Chuck on that episode. And, um, and, and so, uh, and then the next episode I subbed for Greg. So I was, I was in early and kind of often, uh, and then when, when Greg left to do other things, they said, well, the, the sub guy is free now. So why don't we just move him in? And the rest is history. Yeah. Uh, you, you guys have been around so long that you have like multiple eras. Um, so, um, and I, again, I discovered you in the, in the podcast, the true podcast era, um, sometime around 2014, uh, I found you guys, um, and you've had like a lot of amazing moments. Um, from that earlier era, do you have any moments that stick out in your mind as uh, great moments from What's on Joe Mind? Oh, I, I mean, any number of them. Uh, it's uh, been fortunate enough to, to, when you do this show for this long, uh, with the talented people that you do it with, like we're, we're not really broadcasting professionals, right? But we've been very lucky in that we've got folks who are, we've always had folks who are comfortable around microphones and willing to shoot from the hip a little bit and, and be silly and be funny. Uh, so there's, there's any number of those. We, we've, we, we have a running gag about being based entirely on running gags. And if you go back in the, the library, you will hear that that is exactly the case. But uh, as far as things that we've done, uh, we got to do a number of, of pods, uh, live shows at JoeCon when, when JoeCon was a thing. Um, we got to uh, we got to travel. We were guests at Rollout Roll Call a few times. Uh, the show was there in some form or another. I think five times or six times. Uh, I was there for three of them. Um, uh, we have had some amazing guests. We got to talk to John Chu in the aftermath of GI Joe Retaliation. Uh, I got to make fun of him because uh, Retaliation got delayed. And uh, so that that's a moment. I'm blacklisted by Hollywood, by the way. <laughs> that's Probably. that's why. Oh, okay. Right out. I was right wondering. Out. And uh, lots of lots of voice talent. Uh, really, the first, or rather, the next voice talent that is terrible to us will be the first. Uh, they are just by and large uh, just wonderful folks and great to talk to and and more than willing to to come on and and share their stories. So it, it's really been uh, it's been a long ride, but it's been a very fun ride. Yeah, um, and I was privileged to be a listener through a lot of that. Um, some really great moments. Um, so uh, it, for G.I. Joe fans who may be getting into it now, maybe you're coming into the fandom, you're revisiting G.I. Joe from your childhood, um, there is a, a rich source of material in the What's on Joe Mind back catalog. I will encourage everyone to check that out. Um, well, we are now in the live era, or or mostly live. You do you have some special editions that every you do? so often. Yeah, every so often. Yeah. When we can't make it work on a Tuesday, or we've got somebody that maybe uh, isn't as well versed in GI Joe news, you know, it's one thing if we're if we're bringing you on board, we're bringing somebody like like Phil Donnelly or Troy McKee on board. Like those guys are plugged in. They're they're Joe fans. They they collect the current product. They've been in the community for years and years and years, but sometimes our guests don't necessarily have that. So we will have a, a pre-recorded, a little bit more focused special edition. Or if they, God forbid, can't can't go on a Tuesday night for two hours, you know that that's a that's a special edition time as well. So in in this in this new era, you you've you've been hooked into the the modern live era of uh, internet broadcasting, uh, and um, once again. Um, there will be a link to uh, What's on Joe Mind in the description of, of this video. This video will go up uh, at the same time as their Cobra Convergence 7 presentation. So do please 
check out that link and check out all of the things that they've done uh, in the past. Uh, but for those who are tuning in now in the in the live era of what's on Joe Mind, uh, what kind of stuff can they expect to get? What will they expect to see and hear? Well, I, I mean, it's again, we're, we've always been a news discussion program, so we're not necessarily out with, you know, live late and breaking type stuff. But um, but I, I like to think that we have the best and most even handed roundtable discussion in in the in, in the business. Right. Uh, and not to mention, uh, how many times do you get to sit and talk G.I. Joe with a guy who used to run the G.I. Joe brand? Um, so I, I feel that's that's certainly a, a very uh, that's a that's a different wrinkle that that our show brings that a lot of other shows who who in, are in the same format um, don't have. I, I feel like that that's that's a big part of what makes us different these days. Uh, not to mention, I mean, I'm beautiful. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I've got a, I've got that that uh, um, face for radio that they that they say you've got. You've got the voice for television. I, I, I'm not sure exactly how that works, but right. congratulations. I mean, in, in the sense that I should be standing off behind a curtain somewhere and announcing for somebody else. Yeah, that, that, that's it. That's yeah, it. The, the Ed McMahon of, uh, of the G.I. Joe community. Oh, man, he's on a couch. Like, he's in front of the camera. That's true. you got to stash me off to the side. I don't, I don't drink enough to be that fun. I, I, yeah. I feel like you could do it, though. You just, every once in a while, somebody makes a joke, you sit back and go, ha, 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 ha. I feel like you could do that. I um, I, I, I have trust in your abilities. If uh, if there is a, a talk show host out there looking for a, a, a middle-aged, paunchy sidekick, I'm your guy. Yes, yeah. Link in the description. You know, contact information. Absolutely. Yeah. Shuffle off, Andy Richter. This is my time. <laughs> Awesome. Um, so, uh, yeah, you, you do, you guys do a lot more of the news. And I, I have to admit, I, even though I try to keep up with the news, you guys always are more on top of it than, uh, than I am. Um, and, uh, yeah, you have, you have someone who was there who worked, uh, in, with GI Joe and that's, that's pretty special. Um, so, uh, Cobra Convergence is, we are in it right now. Um, and you guys are participating again, and thank you, thank you again for doing that. It, it means a lot to me. Uh, since since this show has meant a lot to me and, and meant a lot to the community, um, since you guys are in it, that that means a lot to me. Um, at the time this goes up, your presentation should also be up, so we're we want everyone to go check it out. Um, can't uh, so there's no spoilers. You can't spoil it here because it'll be it'll be there. It'll be up. Um, can you uh, talk to us about what you're planning to do for Cobra Convergence Seven? What do you, when people go over there and check that link, what can they look forward to? Uh, a, a lot more talking heads. And no, it's it'll be uh, me and, and Mark and, and Ragtime Rob, and we'll be doing something a little special that's a little outside of what we normally do. I don't want to give anything away. Like that's, if you're, that's I, I have a feeling that a lot of the folks who are who are going to be watching this are not necessarily viewers over at our channel. So I, I don't want to, uh, I don't want to ruin it for, for anybody who might be surprised, but it'll be fun. You'll have a yeah. good. Well, that's awesome. Uh, and I'm, I can't wait to see it. Um, and now you're, you're keeping me in suspenders. So I'll, um, I'll, uh, I will, I will check it out immediately and hopefully everyone else will too. Um, so, uh, so, but, but in, we didn't want to go live, right? It's it's July fourth, um, you know, nine o'clock, right? Right around the time where the sun goes down mm -hmm. on Eastern time in here in the dead of summer. So we didn't want to be going live and doing two hours right when when, when fireworks are going off and families are out, because uh, I mean, we we always say, hey, this isn't about doing it in front of a big audience, but at the same time, we don't want to spend two hours live streaming for three people anymore. That's you know, that's fair. Um, you did. Uh choose the 4th of July to go up. Uh, so that's, I mean, that's an important day, um, at least in our country. Um, although you could add some realism uh, by by being live on the 4th of July. You could have the rocket's red glare. You know, you could have the, the bombs bursting in air and whatnot. Right, I'll, I'll have the window open back here and we can just see the stuff exploding in the, the skyline. It'll be great. Yeah, yeah. But, but that does spoil the audio. So I, I, I think that you've made the right decision. Right. And, and when, I mean, God forbid the building behind me catches on fire, which it's going to do one of these days, 
because you know this is central indiana so folks have been shooting fireworks off for about two and a half three weeks now um yeah yeah i mean you're in the midwest you know how this goes yeah oh yeah yeah uh, that uh, we're we we will have uh, fewer fingers um, in this state than we um, had on July 3rd. That's just a, an annual thing. Um, <laughs> but, uh, well, hey, if the burn, if the building burns down, that's views, man. That's that's how you get the views on the Internet. I guess that's a different kind of news that I wanted to get into. That's, 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 oh, yeah, that's fair. Not not quite in your format. I understand. I, I don't uh, I don't want to be covering stuff as I'm running for my life. You know? Yeah, that's. That's fair, fair. I mean, not not everybody is uh, is is going to risk their lives for views. I, however, absolutely will because I am shameless. Yeah, GI um, Joe toy news is a lot different than war correspondence. I don't. Mm. It it should be. <laughs> I I hope it is. Right. There's some days where mm, maybe not. <laughs> maybe not. Um, uh, so uh, it, it, we are in Cobra Convergence now. I've I've already tried to get you to disclose the secrets of what you're planning to do, and I've been shut down. That's right. Uh, but we'll, but more generally, more broadly, um, uh, I've been asking people who their favorite Cobra character is. Do you have a favorite, and if so, why does that particular Cobra character stand out to you? And why is it crystal ball explain yourself well i mean crystal ball that hair that is outstanding right that, that is it's that that's natural too you know he's not doing that there's no product involved there that's okay. no for for realsies um I, I mean i hate to be basic on this one but i'm i'm a cobra commander guy right it, it doesn't matter if it's uh the comic where he is the the ultimate cold calculating type uh you know just just made a wrong turn so you know it, he's got the 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 roots that you can sympathize with but just kind of made a wrong left turn somewhere along the way and and sprouted into this evil bastard or it's the exceptionally funny uh sunbow animated version who uh is like i i watch those reruns now i've seen those shows probably five dozen times a piece and there's still lines that i laugh at as that uh, Chris Lotta hissed through that microphone. And and um, so he covers a lot of bases, right? I, I mean, plus he's he's evergreen. You can't have, he, he's probably the most important character in the entire franchise. You have to have a big bad guy uh, for 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 your, your enemy army to fall in line behind and your good guy army to fight. So uh, yeah, you, you can't be Cobra Commander. It's, it's it, like you may have, your tastes may run differently, but but that's the guy right there. That's the OG. If there is a character that's almost as recognizable as as Snake Eyes, then I it's I guess it's got to be Cobra Commander, right? If that's uh that's the one that if if any if if people if it comes to mind if any character comes to mind that's that's gonna be yeah the guy. yeah he, he's arguably number one and probably number two. Uh, but in terms, of, I mean, just being the most important, you can do GI Joe without Snake Eyes. That, I mean, in fact, yeah, you can't do it without Cobra Commander. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 in the IDW run, Snake Eyes, in fact, died, and they've been sort of doing it without Snake Eyes. But yeah, right. but with Cobra Commander, it's hard to uh, it, it's hard to have conflict without some kind of uh, enemy, some something you know, some kind of antagonist. Um, but um, you, you are also known for uh, one of your favorite uh, Joes, or I guess your favorite Joe, which, uh, which uh, if you could tell the audience who, who that is. Well, I'm, I'm accumulating a pretty solid collection of beachheads here. And this will be light, light, li live, late, and late breaking right here. This is beachhead number 86. 86 exclusive. Oh, yes, that, that is uh, since the last show went, went live. That is... That has come in the mail. So Beach Party 86, my collection of 1986 beachheads, now has 86 figures in it. Now, that's I, that's a, a very nice symmetry. I like that. That's that's excellent. Um, and I, I know that, that you've, pr you're have you probably asked this every time, uh, not just how many beachheads you have, but how many beachhead crotches do you have? Um, mid to high 70s, most of them. Most of them do. That's 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 oh, good. Oh. That's a pretty good record. He's he's got he's got a reputation, right? Like I, I don't uh, like I I don't when I'm I'm buying these things I I try not to spend too much, 
I have a, a definite line that I, I don't cross on these. So anybody, anytime anybody's ever trying to gouge you on three and three quarter Joes, just, just be patient. Mm -hmm. Someone will come along that will sell it at an actual value. Um, you know, I saw one of these guys on eBay this morning, just, just like this, exactly like this, $125. <laughs> and I have not wet my pants. I, I, <laughs> are you kidding me? I didn't pay 25% that much for this guy. And, and anyways, um, but um, wh what was the question again? But, uh, how, how many crotches you have? I think, I think you've, right. I think you've got that covered. But, uh... right, right, right. But again, I, so I don't really buy junk. If I'm going to, if I'm going to put my hard mo earned money down, um, I'm not going to, or I should say, I'm not going to spend a lot on junk. Uh, so I tend to buy unbroken ones. Uh, but that said, there are a few in there that have either been extremely affordable or uh, they've been gifts. Uh, I've got a, a somebody, uh, I've got a hookup in Louisiana, a uh, fan of the show. Uh, Jonathan Robinson has, has hooked me up with, with several uh, less than mint examples. I got one that only has one arm. Uh, but, <laughs> but, uh, you know, so, so we've got, uh, we've got, to, look, man, the one armed guy, he, he has all of his stuff, right? Yeah. He's, he actually cost less than just some of the auctions that I've seen where you're just buying the stuff. So I figured, well, I'm getting something to put all that stuff on. So absolutely I'm, like for, for $9, I'll buy a broken one. No problem. So, um, so that's, uh, that's kind of the rule there. It's, it's all, it's all by thumb. I've received many messages. Why are you driving the cost on these? <laughs> it's like, no, I'm, I'm really not. There's, <laughs> there's over a million of these bad boys. Yeah. That, they made, these were mass produced. They made quite a lot of them. Having 86 of them is not going to uh, corner the market. Right. I mean, they, they were selling beachhead in the, the two years where they were probably selling more GI Joes than ever. So there's literally a million of that guy mm -hmm. floating around out there. And um, so, no, I, I'm not doing anything to the pricing. Nothing no, else. no, it, it, that it, he was a popular character in a popular uh, era of the line. So I think I think it's OK. I think I, I think you, I think you're allowed to pick up a few of them. You're not going to hurt anybody. Right. Something to remember for the, the collecting fans. What what drives prices upward is when you spend too much mm -hmm. then people think they can get it again so just be patient be disciplined and and you will find what you want at a, at a price that you want to spend i i 100 agree uh, and that's that's the way i've tackled it but since we talked about beachhead and we talked about kind of how, how you got what in involved in what's on joe mind um i wanted to kind of roll back and talk about how you uh, discover G.I. Joe in the first place way back when when did you get started when did you get involved uh, and what did it mean to you at the time I tell you when we first f saw those commercials uh, for for the comic books back in the day we, we kind of chuckled at them and this is we Rob and myself uh, Rob is is two years older than me and so uh, I was seven and he was nine and we we, we saw the name and we were not impressed by the name G.I. Joe Right. Like that just sounded hokey and dumb. And, you know, we were we, we were Star Wars kids and, and we had all those toys all the way up through what was Empire at the time. And um, and then um, Rob went with our grandmother off to the local Woolworths and came home with uh, came home with a couple and we were sold. Right. Like we were we were in. He's whispering over there. It was J.C. Penny. I don't care. I, it's, it's, <laughs> Get it's the not, story right, Mike. Uh, I wasn't there. I don't care. Right? It's not. It's not my story to tell in detail. It's his story to tell. And when he produces his own "What's on Joe Mind," then he can come on and be, be the 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 in the hooded Cobra Commander spotlight. Did, um, do you remember which figures he brought home, though? Do you remember the first ones? Yeah, he got uh, he got Snake Eyes. He got Flash, and he got a Cobra Soldier, and and those they may not have all been all at once, but like those were the three that he had before I had anything, so that's, that's how I remember it. Uh, that, that, that's a pretty good set. A lot of I've discovered that a lot of uh, collectors who were around at that time, a lot of them started with Flash. I had a hard time finding Snake Eyes back in '82. Right. People were snatching those up. I had a I had a hard time getting that one. He, so, he, was, he was a tough one for me to find. 
yeah later but but yeah and then so when the time came when when i got out uh and my purchase was at the local Woolworths. um i i obviously i needed to get a bad guy so i got a cobra officer and uh i like i was i was immediately taken by flash that was my my favorite character for most of my collecting time when i was a kid uh but i figured well rob's already got him so i'm not going to get him right away i need to get somebody different uh, so my first Joe was actually Stalker. That's an, another good choice, man. That's yeah, absolutely. Like he was distinctive. He he didn't just look like some some generic Green Army dude. He was a Green Beret. He was badass. Yeah, we we were all aboard Stalker, and uh, and yeah. So that that we had a, a good little good little bunch to to get started with, and and the rest is history. Some forty odd years later. Mm-hmm. Uh, did you have any time when you stepped away from it? A lot of people did. Not everybody did. I've talked to a few people who they just continued to collect, you know, all the way through. Did you have any time when you stepped away from it? Yeah, yeah. Like, I, I was pretty well done collecting them ar- around 87. Um, I may have, I, I was kind of keeping tabs on it afterwards, but I wasn't really buying anything. You got you get into middle school and, and you just find other things to spend your money on and other interests and I was still reading the comic books. Um, I had, you know, we've got a younger brother who never really got into GI Joe the same way we did. He had some of them. So we, we saw, uh, you know, we saw a lot of the 89, 90 run come through the house and, and, and go back out again. Most of them sitting in plastic tubs on the other side of the room now. Um, and, and then just, just after the comic was done, eh, just kind of let it sit for a while. Uh, I I got back in early though. I wasn't gone for very long. Uh, my first purchase on on that uh, weird eBay machine was a Slugger and Thunder, which we never had when we were kids, and uh, that was uh, for eleven dollars. The, the prices have gone up a little bit. Just just, 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 just scotch. But eleven dollars for a complete Slugger and Thunder uh, in 1996. So we, we weren't even back into the, the Toys R Us line of 97, and here I was back in the saddle again. And then, then uh, the, like those, 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 those list serves things, I found some of these guys were willing to send you actual paper lists of G.I. Joes that they were selling. Uh, and I made some just obnoxiously good deals that, that make, me, make my head spin a little bit when I think about them too hard today. Like they were... They were great deals in 1996, so forget about it in 2023. Like, yeah. I, I got a the dude sold me a, a a Viper pilot, the guy on the glider. Yeah, that was expensive then. Yep, sold sold me two of them for five bucks a piece. Oh well, uh... I literally threw the couch over trying to find more change. Like it was. <laughs> so life life was really tough for you at the time. I'm I'm hearing. Um, <laughs> I, uh, uh, look, I, I can't, um, I can't fix anything. I can't build anything. Um, I, I cook. Okay. Uh, but, but man, can I shop? I'm a good shopper. I, if I learned anything, uh, from my, my mother and grandmother that I, I can, I find a deal. Excellent. Yes, it sounds like it. That's fantastic. And and a few deals on beachheads too. So right. we're still going strong. Right. Um, nine, nine, bucks. nine bucks is most of a slugger. Anyways, move on. Uh, I want to remind everybody that there will be a link uh, in the description of this video. Uh, you should be able to uh, check out what's on Joe Mine's um, Cobra Convergence 7 entry right now as you're seeing this. Uh, we've got a couple minutes left, so I what I'd like to do is just turn the floor over to you for any parting words that you would like to say to everyone watching us today. Oh well, I mean, hey, we're we're here. We're on Facebook. We're on Instagram. Uh, if Twitter still exists by the time this is is shown, then we're there too. Uh, we'll probably pop up in whatever comes after Twitter. I don't, I don't know. That's a whole mess. That's yeah. That's a that's a whole thing. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> But um, anyway, but uh, it, it's it's a uh, it's really it's a it's a lot of fun. Uh, when times get bad, uh, I, I I know from my my end, 
uh, it's always been a great comfort to have this show to to go to, like to have that and to be some have something to put my energies into. Uh, and I, I hope that that comes through to the folks who watch it at home. Like uh, we've been doing this for 12 years. We're not the biggest channel in the world. Um, but chances are, if you're plugged into GI Joe at all, you know, somebody who knows about us. We, we influenced a lot of folks out there. Uh, there's a lot of folks who do what we do and they do it just fine job. I don't want to make it sound like we're coming down on those guys at all. I mean, so if, if that, if we inspired you to do something like what we do, then that's, that's the best flattery you can give us. Right. Uh, so we're, we're, you know, we're not, uh, I'm not, I'm not dissing that whatsoever. Um, if watching our, our two bit slime show made you go out and start your own two bit slime show. Yes. Great. That, I mean, that mission accomplished on our end. So, um, but um, we, we love doing this sort of thing. We wouldn't get together every, every Tuesday night and do it. If we didn't, uh, we would uh, hope, hope that uh, this half hour has been enough to get you to, to come on over and give us a, give us a try, give us a look. Uh, and, uh, you know, we, we have a pretty good lead in show. You should probably watch that one too. Um, he's all right. <laughs> he's kind he's, of a hack, but whatever. He's all right. He's yeah. okay. He tries hard. Yeah. He, he I, trying is what counts, right? That's right. Exactly. It's the effort that counts. It's the effort. That's what we're all about. But, uh, we, we've, uh, we've been around a long time. We hope to be around for a long time longer. Uh, so again, we're at what's on Joe mind on, on, uh, uh, YouTube. We are at W O J M podcast on the, the tweet page. Uh, we are at what's on Joe mind on Instagram. Uh, what's on Joe mind podcast on Facebook. Uh, and, uh, and you know, all, all parts where you, wherever you get your, uh, your podcast, if you're an audio listener, um, you can find us on Apple podcasts on Podbean. Uh, you can find us on stitcher while there's still a stitcher. Uh, you can find us, uh, find us on Spotify. Uh, and, and so we're, we're out there, we're available. We are taking all comers. So come on and join here on and find out what's on Joe mine. Uh, thank you. And I will reiterate, uh, your show is, has been important to the community for a long time. Uh, you, your show introduced me to a lot of the, uh, creators, a lot of the voice actors. Um, uh, that was my first connection to a lot of that, those things. So, uh, that's, I, I, I can't, um, I can't overstate the importance of what's on Joe mind and how much I appreciate you guys, uh, doing what you do and being here, uh, and participating in Cobra Convergence seven again. So thank you very much. Uh, and to, uh, to wrap it up, I just want to remind everyone, everybody one more time, uh, go check out the link right now. Uh, it's up. And now that we're done here, you can go watch it. So go watch it right now. So right. it's mandatory. We won't let you back in unless you've seen that one. There will be a quiz next Tuesday. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, if, if you don't watch it, you get banned from the internet. I'm pretty sure. I, I don't know how that works, but, uh, but the important thing is to, to go watch it. So when you're around for 12 years, you make connections. That's right. Yeah. You, you, you don't want, you don't want to cross these guys. Look, you don't want to cross these guys. I, you know, I, 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 I had more fingers than, than I do now. I, I crossed these guys. You don't want to cross these guys. Go watch the show. Um, but, uh, <laughs> thank you, Mike. Uh, and we'll, we'll see you. We'll see you, see you in the funny papers. Absolutely, sir. Thank you so much for the, for the vine and the time. It's, it's always, it's always nice to be in a spot where I'm not hitting buttons. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I, to everyone else, I'm available for for weddings, bar mitzvahs, and all sorts of special occasions. But uh, uh, thank I'll, you, and I really appreciate it. Oh, oh, thank you. And 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 that on that note, I will push the button. So, uh, thanks everyone. Good evening, and uh, see you again soon.